Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or possibly good evening, boys and girls, as this is a children's story reading. Um, I've called this Davy Nori because your Uncle Davy is going to do a little bit of a Jack and Ori event here. I've had the opportunity to read for your listening pleasure a story, possibly more than one later, uh, by the authoress Lee Delahanty, uh, called Jimmy and the Pink Diamond. Now this has been in print, is in print, is in print, you can buy it, okay? Um, you can find out later on where to buy it, I'll find out and tell you. Um, but you can buy this book. But in any event, uh, I've been authorised by the authoress, and if authoresses can't authorise her, I don't know who can, um, to give a reading to you, which I'm going to do in 15 to 20 minute chunks, which is just long enough for a bedtime story before you go to bed. Now, when mummy or daddy says go to bed, that's what you do. Okay, so you've been allowed, you've been allowed to have a 15 to 20 minute story, which I'm now using a lot of the time off by explaining all, all the round rules to you, but that means that I can get more you know, mileage out of the actual readings of time, because I'll do this, I'll, I'll repeat this bit over and over again at the beginning of every clip. But um, it's all about Jimmy, and he's a little cat, a young cat, three years old, which is you know, quite, you know, more than three in cat years, you understand, but he's still not very experienced. So he, he gets himself into a few scrapes in this story, and, well, the authoress said to me, well, you can do a Russian accent. I don't know where she got that idea from, but never mind. So you can do, we need a Russian accent for this, and a few more accents as well would probably go down well. So you read the story. And I said, okay, I'm you know, very happy to get content, you know, you, you want me to read your stories, if they're any good, then I'll read them. So, uh, you know, everybody's crying out for content, please you me in this day and age. So, um, without further ado, we'll go to the next the next thrilling instalment, or possibly the first, if it's the first time you hear me say this, if not, then it's the next. Uh, a thrilling instalment of Jimmy and the Pink Diamond. Hopefully you will enjoy Jimmy and the Pink Diamond by written and illustrated by Lee Delahanty. Forward. What do our cats actually get up to when we're not at home? You don't really think that they lie there on the sofa doing nothing, do you? As soon as we leave for school or work, our cats don't need to pretend to be dumb animals anymore. I can imagine that they read the morning paper or turn on the television. Perhaps they begin an exciting conversation with another cat. You can't say for sure that they don't. But as soon as you come into the room, cats pretend to have lost their minds. They'll run after a ball of wool or they rub their head against your leg. That sort of behaviour is usually rewarded with a bowl of food and a cuddle. And it gets even more exciting when cats go out at night. That's when they have their secret adventures. We will never know exactly what they do. Sometimes you can hear them yowling far, far away. Often they will drag themselves through your front door with tufts of hair missing or a ragged ear, absolutely exhausted. Where have you been? you ask them. What on earth have you done to yourself? They never ever reply. It will always remain a secret between animals. Once in a while things turn out differently. Every now and then an animal will tumble into a situation where they have to help people. The last time was in Amsterdam with a naughty cat called Jimmy and a lady named Granny. It became an exciting couple of days for everyone. Read us Deckers. Trouble in the cloakroom. Early that morning Jim decided to sit in the cloakroom sink. It was dark, quiet and peaceful there. The wash basin fitted round his body like a cool shell. He felt safe and shut his eyes. As he dozed off, he could hear the vacuum cleaner humming in the living room. All of a sudden, a voice shouted, 
Jimmy, whoosh, get out of there, you horrible naughty cat. Granny hated to see him sleeping in the sink. It was so unsanitary. Think of all those hairs, she muttered as she looked down at his mischievous face. Jimmy jolted awake. A yellow dust cloth fluttered close to his nose. He gave Granny a scornful look and left with as much dignity as he could muster. She had scared him witless again. There she goes, she's at it again, he grumbled. She's always dusting when I want to sleep. Boring old Granny. Why don't we ever have a bit of fun? I wish I were a wild street cat. That's the way to live. I would be free fearless like a fearsome grey tiger I would be really really big and everyone would be afraid of me I can see it now my people would bring me roasted chicken mice would bow to me and beg me to chase them dogs would run away crying if they saw me coming I'd be the king of the whole street Jimmy was rather small for his age he shared a fat, flat he, uh, he shared a flat with his kindly old woman in the centre of Amsterdam. He had never even seen a mouse and he didn't have the faintest idea of how to catch one. If he ever met one face to face the mouse might just laugh at him. Still grumbling, Jim leapt onto Granny's narrow bed and turned around three times to find the right position. It was just then that he saw a wonderful toy lying on the pillows. It seemed to be waiting there just for him and it looked oddly familiar. He he he, looky here, he chuckled. Cool, it's a brand new telephone book. He had torn the last one to shreds only a couple of months ago. The book was open. He was alone with it in the room. He smelled the ink and hesitantly stuck his claw into one of the thin yellow pages. The thin pages rustled encouragingly, tempting him. Hmm, would she mind if I tore one little page? Just the one, then. His claws tingled. As he ripped, tore, slashed, and shook the scraps of paper with his teeth, it felt wonderful. But he knew he would be in big trouble if Granny caught him at it. Before long, the bed was littered with ragged little shreds of paper. He arranged these into a fine nest and settled down on top of it to continue his nap. Suddenly, like a clap of thunder, he heard, Whoosh! Jim! You horrible boy! Get off, you devil! Granny was furious. She shook her fist and yelled bad things in Dutch. Her normally sweet face was flushed pink. This time she really meant it. She grabbed the little monster by the scruff of his neck and put him out on the back balcony. Jim was outraged. He struggled to escape. She stamped her foot, slammed the door, and went back to her house cleaning. Bad old Granny, I don't deserve this, snorted Jim. It's not fair. How could she? I was only have it, trying to have a little fun. He sighed and looked up at the sky. It had begun to rain a little. He felt miserable. It was beginning to get cold, and he was so very hungry. Sniffling and feeling sorry for himself, he listened to his stomach rumble. He hadn't eaten any of his smelly breakfast. Out of the corner of one eye, he thought he saw something strange scuttling into the garden shed below. It was too big to be a cat, and it looked scary. It was raining harder as he jumped up on, onto the metal railing to get a better look. Suddenly, it happened. As Jimmy's feet began to slip, he frantically tried to keep his balance. He knew he was going to fall, and he clawed at the slippery bars, trying to keep his feet steady. Like a slow, scary dream, he began to fall, and all of the mischief that he had gotten up to that morning raced through his mind. He thought of Granny's soft bed, the yellow telephone book, and a hundred other little things that had happened since he woke up. His body started instinctively to follow its own rules, twisting and turning itself into the right position as his legs braced themselves for a possibly difficult crash landing. Jim kept his mouth open, his tongue back and his head relaxed as he landed on all four feet in the soft, wet grass of the back garden. He was all right. 
nothing seemed to be broken. He looked up. The balcony was very far away. Jim felt a bit dizzy and wondered if he could climb up the brick wall to the edge of the railing. But the wall was much too high and slippery. It looked impossible. How am I ever going to get back home? He whispered to himself. And what am I going to do now? Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Jimmy peered around the gloomy garden, still dazed by his fall, and he saw the rickety old shed of Granny's neighbour, Mr. Keese. Lifting his feet high in the grass, the nervous cat crept silently up to the dark shed opening. Its door had been missing for years. Jim didn't really want to know what was inside, but he was too curious. What was that? There had to be someone in there. No, wait. Were there two of them? Maybe it was only someone talking to himself. At times, the voice seemed to be crying, and then it would start swearing in a language that Jimmy had never heard before. The hair on the, his back stood straight on end, and his tail grew enormous. He's up to no good, he whispered. Maybe it's a robber. The thing flapped around the darkness and swore again. More frightened than ever, Jim forced himself to peek into the open doorway. There he saw four glittering eyes and four big feet. Four yellow eyes were staring at him. The eyes were enormous and unfriendly. Ooh, it looks like a giant spider, whispered the little cat. I've never seen so many eyes and so many legs on one animal. He had seen cats in the animal shelter. He had seen dogs and large snakes there. But he hadn't had any experience with a giant four-legged scary spider with two horrible strange sounding voices oh mummy he moaned as he tried to back away he was so frightened that his legs wouldn't work properly so he sat down again they were going to get him they probably would eat him right away he was absolutely certain of it jim glanced over his shoulder in the vague hope he wasn't alone with the frightening creatures but he was alone they were staring at him. Yes, there really were two of them. He could see them both clearly now as they hopped out of the shed. They were staring at him again, and they still hadn't said a word to him. Their yellow eyes glittered like four lamps in the dark garden. A troublesome meeting. He felt very small indeed sitting in the grass. His bottom was getting wet. The two strangers lurched out of the shadows. Their large, naked, clawed feet slapped against the rough floor, wooden floorboards of the garden shed. So, said the biggest monster, what have we here, eh? A little cat. Oi, you, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. He no move, Anton. Come here, pretty little cat. Don't worry. Genya not eat you yet. Ha, ha, ha. Look at the little cat. Keep afraid to run away. The biggest one had a very harsh laugh. He was a fierce-looking bird, right down to his toes. His big yellow eyes glittered. He knew that his great size was enough to frighten even the toughest of cats, he loved to chase cats. They were always so surprised that a bird would go after them. He and his brother had proven their courage many times in the rough streets of Moscow, where they had grown up. Genya was a Russian raven. He was almost as big as a small turkey. His wings spanned four feet across. His brother Anton, who stood behind him, was wiping his eyes with one wing and he was still sniffling. Anton was nearly as big as Genya. Jimmy tried to speak. Nothing came out of his mouth but a little squeak. He was shivering so hard that he couldn't keep his head still. Finally, all three of them stared at each other. Time seemed to stand still. Finally, Genya spoke again. Look, brother, little cat wants his mommy. Look at little idiot cat. <laughs> Look at him. I'm dying laughing, said Genya, as he gave Jimmy a sharp poke with the tip of his wing. 
Jim was too frightened to move a whiskey. Don't scare him, Genya, warned Anton. He can maybe help us. Genya laughed again, frowned, and then bellowed at Jimmy. Oi! What you call little kid boy? The bird had a strong Russian accent. The only things that interested him were lots of food and fighting. Your name, boy cat, he snarled. What you called? Ah, uh, ah, uh, my name is Jimmy, sir, stuttered Jim. Jim's mouth was dry. His heart felt like it was beating right out of his chest. His front legs felt like wet paper, and his head shook like a mad puppet. He tried to look away. See me? What kind of baby name is Chimmy? You'll scare him, Genya, his brother Anton warned again. Maybe he's a youthful kid. Anton had a friendly voice. He seemed a little less likely to eat small animals and had a nicer way of putting things than his big brother had. Listen, kid boy, we have problem, he said quietly. We are flying long way from Moscow to Amsterdam. Two thousand miles. Duh, perhaps more. We have no food, no eating, no drink, since we left, only flying in cold night air. We land on a little bridge not far from here. Boris, our grandfather, went under bridge to take a look around. He sees a small room under there, Pravda, room under bridge. Our grandfather, he gets legs tangled in fish line. He no move his legs since last night. We find a little piece of bread and give him to eat. But now he's too weak to make himself free. Soon he will die, I think. So what we do now, Genya? asked Anton. Then he burst into tears again. Genya brushed his brother's tears away with one wing. He wanted to cry too, but suddenly he had a brilliant idea. Anton, listen, brother, I will interrogate cat. We make cat talk. What? Oh, Jimmy, look at Uncle Genya, he yelled. Where you live, boy? You know cat doors? How to go in? Possible you get chased out, but you stay alive, yet? No? You understand me, Kate? Show Genya where you live. Look at me when I talk. He snapped his be sharp beak a few times. Genya's face was very close. His beak was pointing at the little cat's eyes. Jimmy could understand a bit of what they said, because most animals can understand each other if they really try. But the bird's accent made it hard for him to follow everything. He didn't know what to say. I, I, I live up there, see? He finally stammered, pointing up to the second floor balcony railing. Ha, ha! Why you not tell me this? Why you keep a big secret from me, kid boy? Genya looked him up and down, trying to figure out how much Jim must weigh. Is in your house a cat door? asked the big bully. Jimmy nodded nervously. Then Genya put his wing around him in a friendly way and said, We go to your house, da? Okay, Jimmy? Genya was hatching an excellent and painful plan. He began to sing a lively Russian song, and he hopped about yelling, Hey, hey, la la la, Anton, he laughed. We help Cat fly up to balcony. We take him by tail, we grab him here and there. 